Hey guys, Steffi this side and today in this video I'll be taking a look at all the connectors that are present on a standard gaming motherboard and for all those people who have always thought of building their own custom gaming PC, I think you should watch this video. And yes, you do get the manuals and all but the problem is unless you know everything about these connectors, I don't think anything would make any sense to you that is written on those manuals. So and since the motherboard is the most important component because everything connects to the motherboard. So if you know all these connectors, I think in building your PC, 50% of work is already done and most of the connectors that are present on these gaming motherboards boards remain standard so whatever I'm going to tell you in this video would probably apply to your motherboard as well and yes the location of some of these connectors might be different in your motherboard so today we'll be taking a look at Strix Z370e gaming motherboard from Asus so this motherboard supports Intel's 8th generation processor so we'll start from the top left then we'll move towards the right then towards the bottom and then again left and we'll also cover whatever is in the middle of the motherboard so the first one is the 8 pin EATX connector so this connector directly connects to your power supply unit and this connector provides power to your processor main processor and to the left of this connector we have a three pin cpu over voltage jumper uh, you can see that this is a three pin connector two pins are covered by a plastic cap and third pin is visible so whenever you want to overclock your processor and you want to take it to the maximum then the power supplied by this eight pin connector might not be sufficient in that case you need this connector then towards the right side we have this heat sink and then bottom of this heat sink uh, we have the lga 1151 socket you can see that Foxconn LGA1151 socket. So LGA stands for Land Grid Array. So any Intel's 8th generation processor that supports LGA1151 socket can be installed on this processor. So this is one thing that you have to make sure while purchasing a motherboard that it supports your processor. And you can see that if I open this latch, so this is the place where our processor is installed. Okay, so we'll close it. Then moving on, uh, we have these mounting holes. Total, we have nine mounting holes on most of the motherboards, most of the ATX motherboards. So this is one right here. Then we must have one here. I cannot see it. Then total, we have nine uh, nine mounting holes. So these holes are used to fix your motherboard on the case. Then moving on, we have four two-pin connectors. These are for the fans. So uh, there are some CPU coolers that come with single fan and there are some CPU coolers that come with dual fan. So these two connectors will have you covered. Then then towards the right side we have these four DDR4 DIMM slots you can see the name here DIMM uh, B1, B2, A1, A2 so this motherboard supports four sticks and maximum of 64 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 memory so uh, this is this is different for every motherboard you have to check the manual for that and depending upon the number of sticks you are going to use there are certain recommended configurations on how to install the motherboard or which slots to use and then again towards the right we have this four pin RGB connector so you can connect the RGB fans case fans uh, LED strips or your CPU cooler RGB fan strip to this connector then we have mounting hole then we have this four pin chassis fan connector so you can connect the case fan on this header then below this we have four leds so these leds indicate the status of the important components of our build so the first one is the normal boot led uh, the second one is for the graphics card the third one is for i guess is for our dram yeah our rams and the fourth led is for our processor then we have another led which is the power led so it will remain on unless you turn on the main power supply and between these leds we have this 3d mounts so uh, yes we have this 3d mount so asus does supply some first party accessories uh, like the cpu coolers or the m.2 coolers or the rog fonts so you can install those uh, 3d printed accessories to this mount uh, then we have this 24 pin eatx power connector that directly comes from a power supply unit so once you connect this connector this supplies power to your entire motherboard all the headers all the connectors and all the pci slots etc then moving on we have our USB 3.1 generation 2 port so if the front panel of your case has a 3.1 generation 2 port you can connect that wire of that port to this connector then below that we have this I guess 20 minus 1 19 pin USB 3.1 generation 1 port again for the front panel so if the, uh, the front panel of your case has USB 3.1 generation 1 ports you can connect those ports to this connector then we have this six SATA connectors so these connectors are basically used to connect your hard drive 3.1 5 inch mechanical hard drives or 2.5 inch uh, SATA SSDs or solid state drives so uh, these connectors basically use make use of the old school AHCI or advanced host controller interfere bus so these are significantly lower as compared to the NVMe SSDs or the PCI Express uh, the SSD that we install on the M.2 slots then we have this uh, clear RTC RAM jumper uh, RTC stands for real time clock so this connector is basically used to reset the BIOS of the system if you don't know about it 
it's okay leave it you probably won't use it then to the left of this uh, we have this heat sink plate so let's remove it uh, continuing then to the left we have this uh, heatsink plate on which m.2 is written so if you undo these three screws which i already done uh, i'll take this plate out keeping in mind or uh, keeping the screws together so okay okay so once i remove this plate you can see that uh, okay now you'll be able to see so then we have this m.2 slot so this is the slot number one we can see that uh, this motherboard particularly supports uh, two m.2 slots so this is the slot number one you can see that m.2 uh, m.2 underscore one and then again we have another m.2 slot that is in the middle of the board sorry for jumping towards the middle so this is the m.2 slot number two m.2 slots are basically used to install the ssds nvme ssds or m.2 uh, SATA SSDs and the, these can also be used to install the expansions card like the Wi-Fi cards uh, and these expansion card basically comes in three different sizes uh, these sizes are also written on this board which is 2242 2260 and 2280 so whenever you are uh, looking online for an SSD and uh, M.2 SSD uh, 2280 will be written in the title uh, that is nothing just the size of the expansion card so 22 means the width of the uh, SSD or the expansion card and 80 is the length of the expansion card or the SSD and once you place it uh, with the help of the nomenclature that is written on the board you will know which screw you have to tighten and for this particular motherboard you have to take care and you have to look into the manual for your particular motherboard uh, this slot one supports both the nvme ssds and the m.2 ssds m.2 SATA ssds but this slot number two only supports nvme ssds uh, take care of that in your motherboard then moving on to the bottommost corner uh, this is the front panel connector so all the uh, reset switch power switch from the front panel your power led and the uh, hdd leds you have to connect those little switches uh, in this front panel connector i would i would recommend that you check the manual first because uh, i don't want you to break any of the pins because you are done if you uh, break any of the pins then moving on we have another four pin m.2 fan connector so if you want to cool your m.2 ssds after you have installed the plate or you can remove the plate also so you can connect the m.2 fan with this connector then we have two usb 2.0 for the front panel so if the front panel of your case supports uh, usb 2.0 ports you can connect those ports to these two connectors then we have another usb 3.1 generation one port uh, we have one right here and this is the second one it both are similar you can use any one of them uh, these are also used for uh, making connections to the front panel of your case then we have this five pin external fan connector this particular motherboard has two chassis fan connectors so if you need more case fan connectors or chassis fan connectors you can get an expansion card you can connect that expansion card to this connector and that expansion card will give you a couple of more slots for uh, installing the chassis fans then moving on to the left we have three pin addressable rgb header so there's a little difference between the addressable rgb header and the normal Normal RGB header. Addressable RGB header provides you a little more sophistication with your RGB fancy work. Then we have this uh, TPA module. I guess this is trusted platform module. So this is a chip or a microcontroller. A microcontroller. I'm sorry. Uh, so when you install that here, it's supposed to basically provide you hardware-based security. I have never seen it, so I don't know if you might ever need it. And then we have our second RGB header, four-pin RGB header. We have seen that one on the top right side, and this is our second RGB header. So you can connect more LED strips, RGB fans, or case fans. Then to the left we have a serial port connector so this port i guess was uh, used to connect old school printers which used this port but uh, all those printers are basically replaced by the usb uh, universal serial bus supported printers so not sure you are going to ever use this connector also then we have this uh, front panel audio connector so you can connect the 3.5 mm headphone jack and the microphone jack from the front panel of your case to this connector uh, then we have this audio hardware then towards the right side uh, this motherboard is pci express 3.0 compatible or it supports pci express 3.0 and we have these seven pci express slots pci express 3.0 compatible slots so the slot number one two three and four so these four slots are x1 slots so you can install expansion cards like wi-fi bluetooth or ethernet to these cards and they support a single lane of pci express then we have these three slots one two and three these are x16 slots so they, uh, these are bigger babies well uh, that's an oxymoron bigger babies okay so this slot one supports eight or 16 lanes 
uh, I think this one in the middle supports only eight lanes and this at the bottom supports four lanes. So if you want to install your graphics card, uh, you should install your graphics card in the topmost slot. And if you're using dual graphics card or you are installing two graphics card, uh, first one again in the uh, top slot and the second graphics card in the second slot that uses eight lanes. Then moving on, we have this big heat sink. Okay. And this is the M.2 slot we, all, uh, we already talked about. Then here we have two another four pin connectors okay the top one is again for the case fans you can connect the case fans or the chassis fans to this connector then this is the aio pump so if instead of an air cooler you are using an all-in-one liquid cooler there would be two wires coming out one for the pump and one for the rgb if there is one maybe i could be wrong but there would be one certainly for the pump so you have to connect that connector connect that header uh, to this aio pump okay so we almost forgot we have another two pin thermal sensor cable connector so this is a two pin connector you can basically connect the thermal thermal sensor that is uh, basically supplied to you in the box of the motherboard so you can connect that uh, sensor to this two pin connector and you can uh, basically put the bulb of that connector to the component over the motherboard or inside your cabinet or inside your case for which you want to monitor the temperature so i think i have covered all the connectors that are present on this motherboard so i hope this video will help you in some sort of way and i hope next time when you see a motherboard uh, you are not amazed i hope you learned something of value today and if you did make sure you let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel and i'll be putting up more tech content but as always until next time thanks for watching and stay indoors be safe and i'll see you guys next time